and living broadcast with uh, the We the People scroll on the platform. You ever notice here? Do it. Go back up that shot again and catch this. We're kind of working on our brand identity. My friend Gordon Pennington pointed out you got a lot of different ideas going on here. You got your set. I have my uh, George Soros. My I've got the uh, hippopotamus here for various reasons I haven't figured out yet. But the uh, the main idea today is we have a structured personal development pl plan, which is really why I like to do these level ten broadcasts with Carl, my son, and Mercedes Sparks. Howdy. And so we work together on this because level ten living is a pr is a, is is even more important when you're looking at the um, the nature of world events going on, the economic unraveling, the the you know when you have this idiotic uh, intensification of global conflict between nations, unnecessary um, problems that we have in the world that will reach into your life. And I had a dream. Oh, I don't know when it was. It was probably on Father's Day two years ago maybe three years ago, but I don't have dreams all the time, but this one really kind of freaked me out because in part of the dream, I was, Kim Clement was involved with it. Now, I don't, I'll give you all the details, but that means it was prophetic. It's a prophetic dream. And I was trying to get to my father's house. Dream, and it was interesting. The dream was trying to get to see him, trying to get to him. And as I was trying to get to him, I had to go through this, I had to walk around this river bank with these stones that were really um, painful. And I realized I didn't have any shoes on. I was walking barefoot on these rocks and I was trying to get to my father's house and there was the water current somehow grabbed my leg. And the next thing you know, I was sucked into the current of the river and I was down the river. And this is the weird part. I saw a picture, an image, almost like on a, on a hundred dollar bill, you have a picture of like a Benjamin Franklin or something. It's, it's like a watermark, but it was this watermark in the image. And I look back and weirdly enough, it was George Bush of all things, like George Bush. Senior or junior? Senior. No, 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 junior, junior. W. George Bush, junior. W. W. It was his face. And I'm sucked down the rapids going down the river. And I wake up. I had, it was so pregnant with symbolism that I just, I wrote it down immediately. And uh, the only part that I could think of that, that, that I, is coming to me now, which is why the level 10 material is so important, is Kim Clement really started getting involved with presidential political commentary and prophecy with George W. That was when he started to prophesy and get words for political people. I was with him before that. And it was more entertainers and influencers and entrepreneurs. Suddenly he got this mantle for government. And that prophetic mantle for government was part of what I was seeing. And me trying to get to my father's house, I think is trying to get into the spirit, actually trying to get where I'm supposed to go. I want to go. But the current of world events can suck you in so that you're pulled off course. I still don't know what the, but your shoes should be shod. Your feet should be shod with the gospel of peace. That's what the Bible says. I didn't have yeah. evidently peace at this time when I got sucked into the rapids of world events. Seeing George W. there just told me it's political world events that can pull me in. Now, my mission, catch this, is to be able to uh, do the ministry that I've got interpreting the complexity of the times in a prophetic way that is accurate and hopefully provides direction and guidance to other people that have to navigate, but not get sucked in to the rapids. It was like a warning in a sense, I think. Um, and certainly to have more of the peace that's needed to be able to walk in these rough waters that I'm walking on and not be overpowered. And that's why Level 10 living is so important because this material is the gymnasium for me to go back. I pull myself out of the rapids and the current. I just did, you know, four 15-minute segments for Real America's Voice. I'm immersed up to here in culture warfare and politics and economic transhumanism, et cetera. And it's very real, which is why I can suck you in. But you cannot allow yourself to be diverted from what your father's called you to do. 
Your destiny is not hostage to a news cycle. Amen. Your destiny is yours to steward. So level 10 living is how do you do what you're called to do? How do you live the life you're called to live? How do you bring your head out of the rapids of what's going on around you into clarity so you could pursue the high call, the upward call in Christ Jesus? Does that make sense to you? I hope it does because that's why this material, so when you put up on the screen what we're talking about now, it's unstoppable. It's our number one selling uh, module right now, largely because it's the one we're talking about. If I change it to the next one, people will start buying that one. But becoming unstoppable is discovering the agreements that shape your identity. Two key words there, agreements, which means what do you believe, what are you authorizing is real in your life? What do you believe about the world, about money, about uh, men, about women, about family, about the end times, whatever your agreements are, they're shaping your circumstance. That's the whole aha here. It's not about judging whether your agreements are right or wrong. I could have wrong agreements. And, uh, and But the fact is, what we agree with authorizes something spiritually to show up. Secondly, identity. One of the fundamental agreements you have is who do you see yourself to be? Who are you? What are you capable of doing what are you called to do? And your so the, your agreements around who you are are important, and you better be basing them on reality, because we're living in a world of fiction these days, where men are women and women are men, and people can go into the metaverse, the universe, and come back into their body. There's all kinds of boundary morphing influences in the last days. Be clear on who you are, what you're gifted to do, and what you're called to do, because you have authority to authorize access in the area of your assignment. You have authority to authorize access in the area of your assignment. So it's a mouthful. Um, and we're going to be talking about styles. You guys want to talk a little bit about why today can help people get clarity on who they are and how that can help them navigate where they're going? Sure. Um, one thing I want to jump in there, um, as in reference to acting as if something is the way that it is, and then uh, having it actually come to fruition. So it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy of sorts. Um, in psychology, it's referred to as the Pygmalion effect, where if you act as if something is the, is the way that it's going to be, other people tend to act as if that's true as well. And so it ends up creating this environment where that is the reality, that is the, the outcome that ends up happening. Um, and then likewise is the other way too. So if you have this self-defeating mindset or the self-defeating inner monologue, then when you go about your daily tasks, telling yourself that you're not enough, that you're incapable, that you're inept or whatever, other things tend to compound onto that identity and then reinforce that idea. So it, it, it is spiritual, but it's also very natural too. It, it's, yeah. very, it's very uh, a practical thing that we yeah, can I, I could see where someone could be a non-Pentecostal and just say the Pygmalion effect. It's, it's the, it's the um, where I think it was My Fair Lady was the great musical that was based on that, that Eliza Doolittle, uh, who is an ignorant flower girl, could uh, be trained to speak perfect English and uh, that she could basically be masquerading as royalty at a, at a ball mm. and people would believe she was a Hungarian princess. And that was the Pygmalion effect. If they could, if they could get her to uh, modify her speech and be trained by them, they could create a different person. And she became that person. And Professor Higgins, who was kind of boasting he could do this, realized that he was falling in love with his own creation and that she actually had the ability to morph into mm -hmm. something different. It's a fascinating movie. Yeah, there's also a, a series on Netflix currently called Inventing Anna, which is a similar uh, example or exemplar, exemplar of uh, acting as if and then having that manifest in reality. But anyway, Mercedes. Just now I'm thinking about my fair lady and it's like the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. Anyways, I can't That's even exactly do the accent, but <laughs> mine was like a, a Southern rain. version of that. I kind guess. Of Southern. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Little house mm. on the prairie. Um, <laughs> no, but I think it's really good. I think that these, these broadcasts are the broadcasts. I think people are waiting for during the week because it does, it's like a big pause button. And I really love the focus of them when it says, you know what, like when you said, I said amen earlier, but you're like, you know, your destiny isn't tied up in a political party. It isn't tied up in public policy. I mean, your destiny is something that's written uh, before time and God has a plan and a purpose for you in this earth. And understanding that 
and then understanding how he's designed you is crucial in order for you to take your place within the seven mountains. And one of the things we talk about in this material, I don't even know which one's my camera now. I think it's this one because you're where I normally sit, which is fine. I love having you here. Um, but one of, the, one of the things- <laughs> Can't always tell. <laughs> no, I always love having Carl here. Um, is when we talk about taking mountains, right? Because your whole message is seven mountains. This type of material is really, you have to take the mountain of me first before you can go and take other mountains. You have to understand, hey, what are those constraints that are holding you back from your past? You know, how has God specifically designed you? What is your gift mix? What are your spiritual gifts? All those different types of things. What are your passions in life? How do we take something you're passionate about and then monetize it and then get you to that level 10? Like if we had our flip chart out, we would diagram the 10, 10 lifestyle. So when you're talking about, you see the level 10 graphic, level 10 really comes out of job. 10 10 and god gave lance this whole download what lance like 15 years ago well it was on ago? oddly 10. enough it was 2010 at 10 10 a.m wow so lots of tens but why don't you tell people what it <laughs> what it means though well it's just that i jesus says i've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly and what i like to do is I'd love to explore with you that are watching how many of you would love to come to a level 10 event in dallas texas a level 10, it's kind of like a dream trip. We do these dream trips where people dream, like 20 of them. They go with me around uh, outside the country, Cabo San Lucas and stuff. And we would do dreaming on what God called you to do. I might want to do a dream trip, a level 10 dream trip, kind of combine the two because I miss some of these supernatural moments that we would have when we would have people doing I am statements. I am statements are statements when you finally get clear as to, who you are, what you're called to do, what your primary passion in life is. You articulate it and you can declare it. And, and you have to get to the point where you can say it to such a degree that you convince other people you believe it. That's it. Because you could say it and there's a, a quavering. There's a, the, the unique thing about Abraham was he was fully persuaded, the Bible says in Romans, that God was able to do what he promised to do. Give him, uh, give him uh, Isaac back from the dead and, and produce offspring. He was fully persuaded. That has to do with your soul, not just faith. That means in his mind, he was fully persuaded. You have to get clear about what it is before you can get fully persuaded about what it is. That's why the level 10 process is so powerful. So I was watching Tony Robbins. And Tony Robbins could be controversial for many of you, but I was doing something which the Lord actually, my wife had prayed with me, and we decided that I should go down and examine what Tony Robbins is doing. Because when I started doing this level 10 stuff uh, that I was doing, I felt like I was kind of like almost like off the beaten track because Christians were, everyone back then was simply focusing on chapter and verse and chapter and verse. And I found that chapter and verse came alive when I could help do processes that help people experience that chapter and verse. So I would help them do temperament analysis, which we're going to go into today. I was one of the early pioneers in this, me and Sandy Culkin, who was uh, a great uh, behavioral certified trainer, and he's still around today. And he, we popularized to a great degree DISC, the DISC temperament model, to help to understand the differences in human personalities, even in the church, Christians fall into these categories. And there was a lot of pushback back then because it would be like, where's that in the Bible? And I literally had to go find it in the Bible. And I found that with DISC, which is four temperaments, uh, looking at personality from the aspect of four temperaments based on work that was done by Dr. John Geyer, researching the emotions of normal people because so much attention in psychology was on abnormal people. And uh, then it was uh, kind of perfected again by Marston, Woo. who was the inventor of the uh, Wonder Woman cartoon because Wonder he felt Woman. women didn't have empowering figures, not, not bought physical figures, but they didn't have empowering public figures. And Superman was out there and Batman was out there. And, you know, well, what about women? So he created Wonder Woman as, as but he was, he was a psychologist that actually finished off the DISC theory uh, and, it's, and it's data. Mm -hmm. I went to the Bible and I said, Lord, I had somebody got up like the church lady in the middle of a, I, she put her hand up at a conference. She goes, excuse me, are you going to be talking about temperament now and disc? I said, well, yes, I am. She said, that's all I need to hear. And she got up with her pocketbook and her notebook and her Bible, and she turned around and walked out right in front of everybody. And I thought, oh, she was listening to a guy named Dave Hunt back then who was calling people like me the purveyors of psychobabble. That's what he called us, psychobabble, which is non-biblical revelation being brought into the church like the Trojan horse. So I felt terrible. Oh, my God, am I a Trojan horse? And I went back to the <laughs> Lord, and the Lord said, uh, no, you're not. But you, but you, uh, I'm going to show you in the Word everything you teach. And when you have it 
biblically threaded, go ahead and release it. So I go to the Bible and I find out that on the veil of the skirt of the curtain that separates the Holy of Holies from the holy place in the temple, uh, which was for creatures, for, and why would God do this? They were the faces of the cherubim. These are the creatures that are at the throne of God. The face of a lion, the face of a man, the face of an oxen, the face of an eagle. This is a mystery, folks. Because the Bible says that when Jesus cried out, you know, it is finished, the curtain was torn with the four faces, man, oxen, eagle, lion. And I'm reading this, I'm going, this is in Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 14. I thought, those four faces actually correspond to the four temperaments that are found in mankind. The face of the lion is the dominant, aggressive, forceful, results-oriented aspect. We're going to study that. I want you to see how you're made in the image of God and that God's image was the veil. The veil was torn and it literally releases the spirit of God out to manifest in you the personality of the Godhead. The lion is the dominant personality. The face of man is the influencer personality. The face of the oxen is the, um, what we call the highest steadiness Sincerity. profile, sincere profile. It's the only vegetarian out of all of them. And yet the strongest one, if you want to talk about which one can bear the greatest weight. And then this, the eagle, which is the uh, high, high um, uh, the perfection profile, or what we call the C certainty. profile, high certainty. There you have the four. Torn. Now, why were they torn? Because the Bible says that the veil corresponds to Jesus' flesh, meaning the veil that was blocking the glory of the Holy of Holies was Jesus' flesh. Human beings saw Jesus in the flesh, and when his body was torn, the veil was torn. But what was on the veil? Those four temperaments. And then I started looking at Jesus in the Bible, we see him casting out demons, overturning the tables. Jesus, the high, the lion. Then we see Jesus, the charismatic figure. So charismatic that the multitudes followed him. Even his enemies couldn't arrest him in the temple. Never a man spoke like this man. Never a man did the things. They were mesmerized. The police were mesmerized while they went to arrest him. And it's like, what happened? That high, that, that son of man came out. And that's the man in that four. Then Jesus, the burden bearer, I have to tell you about that. You know, holding the children, taking him up in his arms the nurturing characteristic of, of the Godhead, that one which is like a shepherd that the people could relate to, who, who would not quench a smoldering reed or, you know, break a reed or quench a smoldering flock. And finally, the high sea, the, uh, the eagle part of Jesus, which is that loner off in the wilderness, separating himself from the people to hear and to accurately align with exactly what the Father wanted to do and then to speak with perfection, exactly what needed to be said to do exactly what prophecy called him to do at the right moment. Jesus was all four of those. And every one of you is a manifestation of one of those aspects of Jesus. And only he had the spirit without measure. He was fluid. He could, he could, which is why the disciples are always confused. They, they never can figure him out. And I understand that because no human being normally flows in all four perfectly. People flow in one and a secondary backup. And we want to talk to you about what those four are. So any thoughts you guys have? I mean, you guys have so much you can offer, but I have to get this out of my system. After all, I kind of um, curated a lot of I it. like, as we're explaining it, because some people might be familiar with it. Some people might not be familiar with it. Um, but what I think is great about DISC is one, it's simple. This is a personality inventory that simplifies it just down to four. But I think it's important to think about it as the body of Christ. And so what is so great, I think, about personality inventories is that as you understand more about yourself, you can actually understand more about other people too. And you could say, oh, this person is reacting this way because this is their style versus how I react and I make decisions. Like for me, like I'll just say I'm a D. So I'm a like almost just pure dominant D. And I mean, you know, like sometimes in the comments, say, why is she arguing? Why is she? I'm like, uh, listen, I always have an opinion. It's just my style. And I, and I process too first through facts. And so I'm always like, well, what are the facts of the situation? And I will, I will base decisions off of that versus like my husband, who's an SC, we're almost complete opposites. 
which is normal um, in marriages, but he's an SC. And so Larry is very relational and he'll make decisions based off of, well, what are the people going to think? And, you know, how does this, how is this going to affect others? And so it's a very relational style and he makes decisions in a really different way. So, but that's, what's great about one being married to an opposite, but I just want to make the point, like, this is how the body of Christ is shaped. And when we want to understand other people better so that we have unity in the body and it's not so divisive and not all the D's are hanging out, not all the I's are hanging out. And it's like, well, you're not like me. So I'm going to, you know, there's something wrong with you. It's like, no, actually this is, how can the hand say to the foot, I don't need you. You know, how can the eye say, I don't need you. It's like, we need all these different styles for a complete, to your point, a complete picture that Jesus is all for. So anyways, I just like to talk about those differences, but Carla, anything? <clears throat> yeah. Um, you mentioned dream trips and uh, getting some people together to Cat Wiley was the work of leaders. And in the work of leaders, there are really three primary things that leaders do. They craft a vision, they build alignment around that vision, and then they execute it. They champion the execution of it. And before a leader can lead others, they have to lead themselves. So it's important for us to know not only where our strengths lie, but where our weaknesses lie as well, and then be able to speak to those and declare them. But also there's a lot of weight and power that comes with that declaration. For instance, one of my former uh, I am statements included the, the statement, when it rains, I shine. And that provided an incredible a large amounts of opportunities for me to shine because there were so many rainy days. So when you make these declarations, it's important to know what you're actually signing yourself up for because God will give you the chance to shine. But that means that it's going to be in that situation where not everyone else is shining. So it's, it's a lot of um, impetus on us to know what we're actually signing up for and what we're getting ourselves involved in. Likewise, when it comes to um, the disc styles, we're going to go into emotional drivers um, are really the thing that help get us going. And those are separate from the disc personalities, although there is some overlap. So we're gonna talk about the need for certainty, the need for uncertainty or uh, volatility, uh, things that change regularly, um, and, and all the, the significance drivers, those types of things. But it's not exactly a one-to-one, -one, but it does help to know our personality styles based on personal assessments, as well as what usually those styles come with. That's huge. Listen, man, I'm telling you something. One of the greatest, is the camera on me? Mm -hmm. It's not on me. Hey guys, pay attention <laughs> back there. It was a powerful when thing I'm I just talking, said. When I'm talking, when I'm talking, he needs to go to me. When he's talking, you go to him. <laughs> oh, so, so what, the one of the most uh, powerful and and critical skills you have in life, Charles Finney, the great revivalist, said that apart from the study of theology, the number one thing any a revivalist want should study is the psychology of human personality. Because when you're, when you're working with people, you have to be able to assess how they're designed so that you can adapt to the communication that they have. So for instance, Jesus did this constantly. When, he's with, uh, when he was with Mary, who was contemplative and would sit at Jesus' feet and kind of like, um, you know, um, listen to him, he... Uh, when, when Lazarus was in the grave and Jesus did not come and deliver him, uh, she and Martha, her sister, both had the same experience but two different reactions. Mary says to Jesus, Master, if you had been here, my brother would have first in the Bible, the one my son memorized. And it is? John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. Exactly. The most humanizing part of the Godhead. Excuse me for like being resonant with that. Well, all right, but I mean, don't, you memorize the short. I used to pay the. I used to inspire. I said, I want you to memorize. You memorize a Bible verse. I'm going to give you something. He memorized like Jesus wept, <laughs> but he didn't go with a very complicated. One, one of the first Bible studies I ever did at school. Just so you know. Okay, there, Tiger. Well, really, it truly is one of the most profound statements about. I remember dating a guy, and we were like reading the Bible together, and I was so gripped with the concept that Jesus yeah. wept that. God in human form who humbled himself to come in the form of a man so resonated with the plight of humanity and the finality of death that he wept with them. And I remember like trying to communicate it to the guy I was dating. He's like, yeah, he wept. I'm like, no, no, no. you don't get it. <laughs> he wept. And I like, I said like three times and I just realized this, this guy, he's a nice guy, but he's just not going to get it. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I agree. I mean, really like when you, when you think of who Christ was and the perspective he must have had on that situation where here, everyone is death is final. 
There's no coming back from death. He knows who he is, but he so loves those around him. He's literally mourning with them. And to know that he's about to raise him from the dead, you know, but and to know what God's about to do. But I think you just, it's profound to think that, that God wept. It Anyways. is profound. And, and, and the, the point that I don't want to lose in this is that Jesus communicated to Mary in the language she spoke, mm -hmm. being uh, the one that would sit at his feet and listen to him teach. His tears were his response because in, in that moment, authentically, without manipulating her, he just was what love needed to be for the person he was with. And the proof of that is her sister, Martha. Martha, Martha, thou art troubled about many things. Martha was worried. Martha was preparing food when Jesus was teaching once, and she complained that her sister was sitting at Jesus' feet in her contemplative mode while there was so much work to do, like, Master, please tell my sister to get up and help me. And Jesus said, no, 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 Martha, you're worried about many things. Martha had a different personality than Mary, is my point. And so when Martha comes to Jesus in the same situation with her dead brother, and she says the same words, Master, if you had been here, my brother would not be dead. Jesus reacted differently. And what he did was he said, did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? He challenges her and redirects her focus. He challenges her. So what you'll see is different personalities need Jesus in a different way. And uh, there are times when you need Jesus th whose compassion is manifest. And then there's times when you need Jesus to challenge and, and, di and direct you. And he'll do it through the preacher. He'll do it through the gospel. He'll do it through ways you don't even realize. The Holy Spirit's working through <clears throat> vehicles to move you in a direction. Yeah. My point is, if you understand what we're talking about here, you can adapt yourself to have the most effective impact on other people because you're speaking the language they speak not the language you speak. Secondly, every failure you'll have in life that you yourself are part of is going to in some way involve you not managing how you're showing up or how your strengths are being perhaps overused. Every strength overextended becomes a constraint. So if you're naturally dominant and strong as a leader, you're going to hurt people. You're going to alienate them with your aggression when it's inappropriate. If you're naturally verbal and, and entertaining, you're going to hurt somebody by being funny or silly or, or, or humorous at their expense. You see, I can give you over and over and over again. You can see where constraints show up. And they show up, you can see it like in the Academy Awards incident that we just went through. It was, you know, humor on one side and aggression on the other, colliding on a national platform. But it's it's true among leaders. It's true in our own personal life. So, Carl, uh, I start off with Tony Robbins just because I saw him before he went to the DISC model, which he uses. I saw him have people get up and share their experiences uh, on in front of a you know audience about areas of their life where things were, were in need of help. And he was asking questions in order to find out what drove their behavior. Mm -hmm. If it was certainty, uncertainty, um, significance, uh, or um, connection. And I only after I, he explained what he was doing, because once he found out what drove them, mm -hmm. he could show them how that unconscious need was getting in the way of what they were trying to do. Yeah. And, uh, that's when I discovered he was intuitively going in the direction of the four temperaments to see how the need that each temperament has shows up. Yeah, one thing I do want to add in there is uh, when having conversations with really close personal friends of mine, if they come to me with a problem, I'll outright ask them, which hat do you want me to wear? Do you want me to wear the hat of a coach? Do you want me to wear the hat of a friend? Do you want me to be a father figure in this? Like, how do you want me to respond to this? Because there's so many different ways to speak to the potential of what you could do. And more often than not, they'll say, I want you to speak to me like a friend. So I have to reel it in instead of letting this be a teaching moment. You know, it's just like, all right, well, that sucks, dude. Sorry. <laughs> you know, that's life. That's life. Um, but speaking to people where they're at and then also knowing to speak to the potential within them, that they really do have the power within them to change their circumstances, to change their situation. Um, also, I, I may have misheard what you had said uh, in regards to the shortcomings or the failures 
um, being strictly a, a consequence of not managing yourself. Because I think it was, uh, to quote a, a famous fictitious character, John Luke Picard, it's possible to do everything right and still come up short. It is possible to do exactly what you need to do and not win. That's that's not yeah, and of course, unfair. It, 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 and, and it depends on how you define find winning. Jesus certainly oh, yeah, didn't, sure. didn't, didn't win when he was executed, mm -hmm. but he won because he was executed. So what looks like a failure could be a success on the other side. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. what I was saying is, and I right. was, and I was when I fra when I said it, I thought, well, I probably would rephrase it. But what I'm trying to emphasize right. is that you will be surprised in the chart history chart that you do when you have those low points and those high points, you'd be surprised how often those low points were affected by your own behavior and your own needs and the way that you managed yourself in that situation. It's kind of like the Clemmer responsibility model that they victim work with. Responsible. Is the victim yeah. responsible. Is that somehow you're giving the story about how you're a victim, but I could tell you from the other guy's perspective how... Um, how you actually set it up so that was what happened so you're you need to take responsibility for how you show up before you start doing your victim story because sometimes a victim story is a way of evading responsibility for your own choices yes. and that's true in temperament as well as in anything and it's also very possible for you to victimize yourself um that's something that i've heard or come across a number of times on youtube different you know people who i, I allow to speak into my life um, it is absolutely possible for you to have such a high, hard goal that you refuse to allow yourself any grace or mercy in order to get that goal. And so you're continually setting yourself up for failure along the route before actually actualizing, before getting to the place that you want to go to. Mm -hmm. So it is possible, especially for the high D temperaments, the people who have high significance needs. The pe yeah, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. <laughs> you're a D too. Hey, no. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we, got, we got three Ds. Uh, occasionally I go D, although I prefer to be a high I. I do end up with a D. Bring up those profiles again, please. I want to show people. I want, how many of you resonate with this? Because we're going to have to cut this episode short. Well, I haven't gotten to say anything. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. I want to we, come back to Martha really quick because I feel like Martha got a bad rap right there. I agree. I, I, well, Martha would be over here expressing enthusiasm, high I, taking action, encouraging collaboration. Are you I, guys, think, I think Martha's a uh, CD. Do you think Martha's an I? Thank you, camera. Okay, priorities, <laughs> expressing enthusiasm, taking action, social recognition, group activities, fears, rejection, disapproval, loss of influence, being ignored. Now, notice that the uh, you'll notice charm, enthusiasm, sociability, talkativeness, limitations, impulsiveness, disorganization, lack of follow-through. Now, over here, that's the I. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't think Martha's an I. Uh, now, go over to the D. She's a DI. <laughs> I think she's a DC. She's task focused. She gets she's chastised. For she's task, logic focused. Task focusedness. If you had been here, my, my brother would not. No, listen, be hold on, hold on a second. That's the quote taken out of context. I got to go back to this really quick. We Put just got to pause because I feel like the word of God's been done a disservice. <laughs> so. It says, they say, the girl, the, the two women send word to Jesus that Lazarus is sick. And so the, the messenger finds him. And Jesus heard this and he said, the sickness is not unto death, but the but for the glory of God, that the son of God may be glorified by it. Okay. So then Jesus starts to get close. Martha leaves the house. Mary stays behind. Martha says to Jesus, this is going to be in 1121. Lord, if you, I know that whatever you may ask of God, God will give you. That's, that's Martha's level of faith. And then Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the res resurrection on the last day. And then Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of the living God who is to come into this world. I mean, she makes a very similar confession as to what Peter makes. Oh, yeah, it's brilliant. And I'm, yeah. gl I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. she basically says, even now, whatever you want to do will be done. But she's almost putting it off to resurrection. Yeah, there'll be a resurrection. It, I believe that. He's saying, yeah. right now, I am a resurrection. Right now, exactly. She's thinking through the, like, the, like she, to me, that's like a DC. Okay, so, so, so Mercedes is saying, and, I, and I'll just show you how, uh, I, and I'll go along with you and agree with you, the D seems to be, the stronger characteristic. However, I point out that where the D and the I overlap, mm -hmm. you have active, fast-paced, assertive, dynamic, and bold. That's why I say she's an ID or a DI. Or DI. As opposed to questioning logic, folks, objective, skeptical, and challenging. I see the energy here is assertive and active. She went out to meet Jesus, though, to confront him, yep. right? And so, look, Lord, and who stayed behind? 
Mary stayed behind. See, to Mary's the S. I almost feel like they might be DS. Maybe opposites like that. All right, that. well, this is the beauty of this. But let's go go down oh, and read for us the characteristics of the dominance, <laughs> yeah. since you and Carl are both this. Tell you us too. about... You too. No, tell us about your characteristics. Oh, my characteristics. Okay, so priorities for me, always getting immediate results. Results, results, results. That's all I really like. Uh, taking action, challenging self and others, comment haters. <laughs> this is my problem, right? Is that like, and you're a D2. So for you and I... We don't mind conflict. You people don't realize like how we talk now is how we talk all the time. And so and we're used to it. We have a rhythm and it's like, you know, like almost like brother sister type of a thing. But for people who are S's that are listening, it's so uncomfortable. Nails on a chalkboard. It's like we don't no conflict. Don't don't don't, don't do it. challenge him. And it's like, no, you don't he, Lance actually likes that. Like you like, you enjoy the mental sparring. You actually enjoy yeah, that. Yeah, it's like right now you're telling yeah. me I'm wrong. No, I'm just on saying. national television I'm with just... my own pro and you know what I think you might be right because I heard it <laughs> I heard this presented to me 20 years ago as DI versus SC Interesting. it could be D versus S yeah. is the point you're making so continue on with the D please yeah. I think we just need a little bit more C in the profile right? Carl why don't you pick yeah. it up yeah. tell, Carl tell us what, so motiv what motivates a D Thank Carl you. thanks Carl okay. Okay. go ahead so Dude, are you guys paying attention? I'm talking. I'm running my own pro. Will you please read? You do motivated, Carl. I do motivated. Yeah, motivated by power and authority, competition, winning, and success. Now, like you mentioned earlier, there are different levels of success, and they're almost all internally assigned. So some people say their success is only when they win, objectively from other people's point of view. Success could be, all right, listen, I, in uh, martial arts, I was able to do the kata the way that I needed to. I was able to do the dance move, the movement, the way that I needed to. I didn't win the whole bout. I didn't win the final fight, but I'm getting better. I'm moving up that uh, from that plateau experience. So that's another great way to, to focus on where your successes could be. Uh, did, did two of you share the fears? Loss of control, being taken advantage of, and vulnerability. That's another great thing too, is if you're aware as a D that vulnerability could be a hiccup, yeah. then you actually go out of your way to be overly vulnerable or overly transparent. Some people, totally. not everybody, because it doesn't work. Why? Because I don't want my fear to dominate me. I don't want my fear to tell me what I can and cannot do. I, I'm about to say something I shouldn't have said on national TV. But yeah, if, if I'm aware of the fact that vulnerability could be a limiting factor for me, then I'm willing to actually be exposed and be transparent because I'm human. I know that. You Which, know that. So, and so therefore, I would say that um, that uh, motivated by power and authority, fears loss of control. Mm -hmm. I think that there is a connection between that. And I want you, you that are listening, you that are watching. If you're not, if this is the podcast, you're just listening. Is this you, or is this someone you're married to, or is this a boss, or somebody, or is this an a insubordinate child. little yep. a child of yours? Because <laughs> Annabelle hilariously has to raise Carl, who and Bless Annabelle is an oh IS, God. accepting, people focused, empathizing, receptive, and agreeable, and she has Carl as a child who is getting mad at her because she's not respecting him the way she should. <laughs> she would laugh in my face. <laughs> you were, he was so entertaining, she'd laugh, and he took it as a sign of disrespect. <laughs> she said I had pig legs. It was uh, pig legs. Pig legs. Short. <laughs> well, I think another thing, too, is both you and Annabelle, you know, I think you, Lance, tend to, when you're on stage, you're an I. Yes. I absolutely think that's true. When you're off stage, I think you have more D tendencies. But I think publicly people see both you and Annabelle as ISs, and one of the things I noticed, you know, like one of my fears, I would say, oh, I don't know if it's a fear, but it's just something I'm, I'm thinking about is being taken advantage of. So the number of people that come to us with a business opportunity, Lance just has to hear. And I am very skeptical most of the time. And, you oh. know, eight out of 10 times, I guess I'm the gatekeeper here, but eight out of 10 times, it really is just some opportunistic thing. And before I really got here six years ago, there is a number of things you guys signed up into because you don't necessarily have that. You are people focused. Like I always say like Lance and Annabelle see people the way God sees people. And you have a real gift of overlooking flaws that I think other people would be like, Hey man, that's a red flag. And you're like, no, rose colored guy, glasses, the yeah, whole ride. <laughs> this guy, he's the best. I mean, you really see people like God sees people and it's a true gift, but that's why the body's so needed. So it's like, I could be like, Hey, you know, Lance, I don't know about this. And there's enough trust and respect, which we've talked about in, in different programs. But when you have enough trust and respect with somebody, then you kind of press pause and you're like, oh, really? You're, is that what you're seeing? Because I'm not seeing that. And it works both ways. Sometimes I can be too skeptical. And you're like, Mercedes, it's going to be all right. I know this well, person. Well, and, and because we're coming up on it, uh, we have to 
to end and land the plane right here. But I, and it always happens that the I's and the D's get the energy and the focus and the conversation first, and the S's and the C's end up having to wait. But we're not going to leave you alone because 70% of my audience are actually S's. Mm -hmm. So I, we're going to hit you in the next broadcast. Well, not hit you, but we're wow. going to... <laughs> yeah, threaten the S's with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. Listen, we're going we're gonna, to... And by the way, you need to get a hold of this. We just, this is just, we just two pages out of our... Um, I don't know. How oh, many pages? 57 pages of documentation we've got for you. This is... We're working and walking our way through the level 10 training identifying your emotional drivers, understanding what your personality style is and uh, your strengths and limitations, and understanding how to build rapport with others so that you can influence them. You want to get a hold of that. And by the way, where do they go to get a hold of that? Level10living.com. And if you put in the promo code podcast, you get 20 percent off which is like a steal it's way too much level 10 living.com <laughs> and, and then podcast uh, yeah you're, <laughs> you get 20 percent off and it's 20 percent off of the module on unstoppable and 20 percent off of the four modules that are wow. all part of the entire level 10 living or is that true yeah we're gonna and we're also gonna add up it's 20 percent off whatever is in your shopping cart at the time okay. of checkout. Okay. Um, but we're also going to work to get the disc profiles up there. And I, I want to throw out the idea, instead of waiting for like a um, dream trip, because I don't know if that's the next thing on the schedule we're going to do, but um, we could do a webinar. I was thinking we could throw a webinar out with like you and Carl, and we could do the profile. People could bring their profile, and then we really go in depth, because honestly, the one screen that we showed is a little out of however many 20 a 20 page inventory that you could get so anyways this is great for team dynamics this inventory this is great for your family this is great if you're thinking about getting married or you're married to somebody mm. i mean just yeah. i love things that help show you more about how god's designed you because god's a god of order so it's silly to think that there aren't commonalities in how he's designed people um, and so, so I think it's so important to understand yourself better and those around you as a way to minister to people. They actually, I'm going to say this too, really quick. This is used in sales. So if you're selling to a D, if D's are only concerned about results, then what are you going to focus on? Results. If I's are relational, then what are you going to focus on? The relational component. It works the same way with the gospel. So if they're relational and you want to evangelize somebody that's an I or an S, the way you minister to that person is going to be totally different than how you minister to a D or a C. So it's applicable in so many different areas. Uh, but anyways, level10living.com. Uh, you can go check out everything there. I'll get the profiles up there and make sure to use the promo code podcast. And we'll be back again with our next uh, broadcast. And I want you to be have this material in your hands because we're going to be starting off with, I think we're going to zip through to page uh, 31. Oh, we're going page to 31. Page 31. We're going to talk about the S's and the C's because ah, yes, you're yes, married yes. to one or you are one and you need to really protect these powerful people. All right. See you again next Level 10. Thanks for listening to this Lance Wall Now broadcast. If you enjoyed today's show, make sure to subscribe and share the episode. See you tomorrow.